Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. Today we'll have our vocabulary quiz number 16 on the words that we learned in our vocabulary series from day number 76 through 80. These quizzes, as you know, are a little bit fast paced. I won't have the luxury of going into all the details, all the pronunciation as we do in the regular videos. If you want to learn, if you want to learn the words properly, the thing to do is to watch the actual videos, day 76 through 80. And that's where we learn the words. Right now it's just a quiz. We're not here to learn the words for the very first time. Let's get going. The very first word we're going to have on day number 76 was Masochism. Masochism. What does it mean? It's a noun. It means person who likes to inflict pain on himself or have somebody else inflict a pain on him because this person enjoys pain. To enjoy pain. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a condition that some people have where they drive pleasures from having inflicted somebody have, had to have somebody inflicted pain, physical pain on them. Typically, but not always, but typically it is in the context of sexual activities. And the word is masochism. The person who actually enjoys this activity is called masochistic. Masochist or masochistic? To describe somebody as masochistic, that means he drives pleasure from having pain inflicted on him or her. Let's move on. I'm not going to write the meanings. As I said, you're going to watch the video yourself because if I start writing everything down, the last quid, last quid turned out to be 50 minutes long. We don't want that. The next word we have is... Hedonism. Heed, hedonism, hedonism, yes, again it's a noun, hedonism is just the opposite, He's a hedonistic person does not ask himself or herself, a hedonistic person, let's put down the adjective of it, Hedonist does not ask himself or herself before doing something. Is it a right thing to do? Is it a correct thing to do? Is it moral? Is it proper? They do not ask themselves any of those questions. The only thing that 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 that, that comes to their mind, the only the only concern of theirs is, is it pleasurable? Is it going to give me pleasure? Is it going to be fun? If it gives me pleasure, I will do it. So this person lives for the pleasure. This person enjoys pain. This person does everything that they do purely for the pleasures. As I said one more time, I'm going to repeat one more time, remind you one more time. If you want to watch the, learn this video properly in details with all the definitions written down, on, written down on the blackboard, watch the appropriate day. We are on day number 76 right now. Day number 76. The next word we learned was... Monastic. No. Nas. Tick. Monastic is only situations where a person lives a very simple existence. A very simple existence. A very simple existence. Devoid. Devoid of all the worldly comforts. Devoid of all the luxuries. Very simple. Very austere life. Very austere life. The word monastic comes from, the word monastic actually comes from monastery. Monastery is where the monks live and what sort of lives do you suppose monks would have? A very simple life. 
devoid of luxuries, as we said, devoid of all the worldly comforts. And such an existence, such a bare existence is called a monastic existence. It's called monastic existence because you live like a monk. Monastery is, place, is the place where monks live. So, if you live like a monk, you have a very monastic existence. Bare, ex bare minimum is what you have here. Very austere existence. Let's go on and learn the word austere. A very austere existence, which means without comforts, without luxuries. And from the word austere, we have the noun, which is austerity. Austerity, which is what a lot of European countries are going through right now. Not a lot of them, but southern European countries. Portugal, Spain, Italy, Greece. They're going through right now austerity because they have no money. The, they, they have run up their public debt above 100% of their GDP in some cases and now they have to tighten their belt, they have to live a simple existence and the condition is called austerity. Let's move on. We need room obviously, we need room. The next word we learned was ascetic. Ascetic, which also means living a life without luxury, having a very austere existence, living like a monk, living like a monk, uh, devoid of worldly comfort, as we said, austere existence, ascetic existence. Let's move on. What is, or rather who is, who, what kind of person is, can be described as a stickler? A stickler is a person who pays exact attention to all the minute details, all the minute details of a procedure. They look for exactness, they shoot for, they shoot for exactness. Everything has to be, everything has to be just so if they pay attention to minute details, trivial details, and they are called sticklers. Some, 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 someone might be described as a stickler for neatness, because this person is very neat freak. They might be described as stickler for details, because he pays attention to details. And when we talk about minute and tiny and trivial detail of a certain procedure, the minute, tiny, trivial detail of a certain procedure is called... Uh -huh. It's a singular, which means minute, little, trivial details of a certain procedure. The plural, minutia, the plural is See, so far it's the same. Minu she e. Minu she e, which is a plural. Details, minute details, trivial details. And the way I remember, the way I keep the two separate, the mnemonic device that I use is very simple. First thing is that it ends in a sound of e. Minu she e. It has the e. And this is plural. This is plural because it has more letters. It has one more letter. It doesn't. This one end, does not end. It's the same meaning, the same, same spelling, with one more letter at the end. So it has more letters. So it's plural. Minushi e. And how do I remember that it's to be pronounced minushi e? Because it ends in an e. It ends in an e. 
That was the end of day number 76. Let's move on to day number 77. But this is not how we learn anything. It, 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 to learn properly is to watch the video. Subscribe. Just type in vocabulary words. Just type in vocabulary words. D. 77 and you will watch the videos where we're going to go through the list right now. What does it mean to subscribe? Subscribe has two meanings. One meaning is to subscribe for a magazine or a newspaper where you pay a certain amount and you engage in a contract where the publisher promises to send you certain issues, certain number of issues. You buy a subscription. That's one meaning. Everybody knows that meaning. It's a very simple meaning. Another meaning to, of subscribe, to subscribe, means to, to believe in certain idea, to believe in certain idea, certain motion, certain theory. If you believe in certain idea, certain notion, certain theory, you say that I subscribe to that school of thought. I subscribe to that school of thought means I believe in that. I believe in that idea, I believe in that theory. Uh, I agree with it. I subscribe to it. If you say I don't subscribe to that notion, I don't subscribe to that uh, logic, that, uh, that idea, that means I don't believe in it. The next word is the next word we learned was bombastic bomb past it's an adjective what does bombastic mean? Bombastic is means it's a loud pretentious pompous speech. It's a loud, pretentious, pompous speech full of grand gestures and big promises kind of speeches that we hear from politicians, full of grand gestures and big promises, but usually devoid of substance. Usually devoid of substance. Of substance. And such a speech is said to be bombastic. It's a bombastic speech. Pretentious and pompous are the words we learn on day number 68, which is why we're not going to cover them right now. We learned the words on day number 68. Let's move on. We are still on day number 77. The next word we learned was grandiloquent. Grand. Del a quint. Grand eloquent means exactly what it says. If we were to dissect it, if we were to break it up, we'll realize that the prefix is grand, which means big. And loquent is the word, it comes from lo loquation. Loquation, which means to speak. Literally, grand eloquent means big speech. Well, big speech is a, is a bombastic speech. Bombastic and grand eloquence, or grand eloquent rather, are synonyms. The noun is grand eloquence with a CE at the end. Let's move on. The next, next two words we learned were.
circumlocution. Circumlocution. Circum. Lo. Q. Circumlocution again means exactly what it says. Circum. Circum is where the word words like circle and circumference come from, which means to go around and around. Around. Circum means around. Around. Same root as circumference. Circle. Elocution means to speak. So if you engage in circumlocution, if you engage in circumlocutions, you're talking, you're speaking around and around and around and never getting to a point. You're beating around the bush. You're beating around the bush. You're not answering my question. To beat around the bush. To beat around the bush. To evade the question. To, to dodge a question. Not the question. To dodge a question, whatever the question was. To prevaricate, to equivocate, to, to qualify. Of course, we know the first meaning of the word qualify. To qualify for something means to show that you have the ability to do, do something, you have qualification, you have the ability, you can do it. That's the first meaning of the word qualify. Everybody knows that meaning. What does it mean to qualify an answer? What does it mean to qualify a statement? Not an statement rather, to qualify a statement. Well, you will learn it when you watch the videos where we learn these three words, which was day number 27. Day 27, or it could be 26, I'm not sure. To, equi to equivocate, to prevaricate, to qualify, means you're not answering me, you're not giving me any straightforward questions. There are too many ifs and buts. And if you, if you do that, you're engaging in circumlocution. You're not giving me a straightforward answer. You're going around and around. If more, From the word circumlocution, we recognize that we had learned a similar word on day number 23, and the word was circum, you see, circum, circumspect. Circumspect, again, means exactly what it says. The prefix circum means around. And spec means to to look. So what does it mean to look around? Well, if, I'm, if I look around like this all the time, I'm looking around, I'm being very cautious. I'm being very cautious because I think something is going to happen. I'm being, I'm being very alert. I'm, I'm wary of the situations. I'm very cautious, very alert, circumspect. Circumspect, spect is where we see, which means to look where we see words like spectacles that you wear in, around your eyes, spectacles, or in the, in, in the sporting events, you have stadium full of spectators, watchers, onlookers, spectators, spectacles, circumspect. Let's move on. We are still on day number 77, so we have to pick up speed. We have to pick up speed because otherwise we'll be here for a long time. The next word we learned was loquacious. Lo quacious. Loquacious means to be, to be to 
we talkative. So we talk to you, we talk a lot, you talk and talk and talk, you talk all the time. She talks all the time, my gosh, she's so loquacious. She's so... She's so... Garrulous. Gar... You... She's so garrulous, garrulous, which means she is habitually talkative. She talks a lot. Garrulous and loquacious are synonym. The noun of loquacious would be the noun would be Loquacity. Loquacity. Let's move on then. The next word we learned was Mill Milieu. This is a tricky pronunciation. The second syllable is year. You see how O and the E are joined together? Milieu. It's a French word, obviously. Milieu, which means environment, surrounding, atmosphere. Environment, surrounding, atmosphere. I'm not going to write all of that down. One more time. Environment, surrounding, surroundings, if you like, plural, surroundings, atmosphere. If you say that I like going to that restaurant, I like going to that restaurant because I like the milieu. I like the milieu. I like the atmosphere in that restaurant. The food is no good, but I like going there because of milieu. Or I like going to the restaurant. Not only the food is great, but so is the milieu. Do you understand? And from the word milieu, you, we recognize the suffix, which is this word, which is pronounced simply as lu which means, and the idiom that we use is in lieu of, in lieu of. That's the idiom. That means in place of, instead of, instead of. Just excuse me one second. Instead of, in place of. So, I'm here. I, I, I'm here at the meeting. Because Mike could not come today, Mike could not attend the meeting, and he sent me in in lieu of him. I am here in lieu of him, in lieu of, in place of him. I am in place of him. Instead of Michael, I am here instead of him. I am here to represent him. I am here in place of him. I am here in lieu of him. Number 78. Day number 78. That was the end of it. As I said, we have to keep on going, otherwise it will take forever. An asymptote. As in toad. What is an asymptote? An asymptote is a mathematical term. It's the upper limit. On a, on, on a curve. There is, there is a line here that says y is equal to 7 and if I draw a curve that looks like this eventually eventually this graph eventually this graph will reach the value of 7. But when when will it reach the value of 7? It will reach the value of 7 It will reach the value of 7 When will it reach the value of 7? It will reach a value of 7 It will reach 7 This graph will reach 7 asymptotically That's the adverb Asymptote Asymptotic with the adjective 
asymptotic and the adverb of asymptote is asymptotically asymptotically it will reach 7 when will it reach 7 it will reach 7 asymptotically when it reaches infinity at infinity this graph will touch 7 at infinity asymptotically let's move on the next word we learned was semantics even though it ends in a s even though it ends in a s it is used with a singular with a, used with a singular verb semantics which is the study of it's a, it's a term from linguistics in linguistic, the study of words, phrases, expressions, uh, their backgrounds, their history, their historical background, that branch of linguistics is called semantics. Let's move on. The next word we learned was par. Parlance. Parlance is a way of speaking of a certain region, certain part of the world, certain profession, certain group. Way of speaking. Let's put it on the top here. Parlance is a way of speaking of certain part of the world, certain profession. certain group and that way of speaking, that particular way of speaking of that region, that particular way of speaking of that profession is called parlance. And the synonyms of parlance are vernacular, and jargons. If you speak where you employ too many technical terms, too many uh, terms from your profession, too many terminologies from your profession, that is not about their terminology, then you are employing the parlance of your profession, of your region, of your of your group. Vernacular, jargon, terminology, those are the words we already we had already learned on day number 34. In the event that you're interested in learning them properly. Let's move on. We are still on day number 78. The next word we learned was idiom. Idiom is a very simple word. We just had an idiom a little while ago in lieu of. In lieu of is an idiom. I would like to look at it, not I would like to look on it. I want to look uh, with it or off it. The idiom is I want to look at it. I want to look at it. That's an idiom. Idioms are groups of words which when you translate from one language to another language, in most cases they make no sense. Idioms are not usually very easy to translate from one language to another. All languages have idioms. These are groups of words that have very special meaning in one meaning in one language, but when translated to another language, they lose their meaning. Those are called idioms. Very simple. The question very simple word. The question is if it's such a simple word, why did we learn it? But we wanted to learn it because idiom is a noun. What's the adjective of idiom? Eat, e, um. When you put it in the adjective form, it changes the pronunciation. Idiom becomes idiomatic. You see how the pronunciation changes? Idiom, idiomatic.
eat, e, o, mad, that's the adjective, idiomatic, you understand? If I tell you, uh, give me a book, I would like to, I would like to look on it. Give me a book, I would like to look on it. Look on it is wrong. The correct idiom is look at it. So, such a statement. You would say that this statement, I would like to look on it, is not correct. How is it not correct? It is not correct. It is not correct. Idiomatically. It is wrong, idiomatically speaking. Idiomatically would be the adverb. It, it was originally, it was wrong. It was not correct. Idiomatically. In other words, it, the error in that statement was of the idiom, the idiom was not correct. Let's move on. The very last, very last word we learned on day number seventy-eight was shear which means peel. Unadulterated. Unadulterated was the word we learned on day number 75, which means without impurity. Unadulterated means without impurity. Shear is the word. And we hear the word share being used in many different contexts. One can speak of sheer happiness, sheer laziness, sheer stupidity. I did that out of sheer stupidity. Now the idiom here is out of, not with or out with uh, or something like that. The correct idiom is out of. I did it out of sheer stupidity. Well, how did you manage to find the solution to the problem? Well, it was a sheer luck. It was a sheer luck, sheer dumb luck. It was a sheer courage. It was a sheer courage on his part to get up in the room full of 50 people and walk up to her and speak with her. Sheer courage, sheer incompetence. He blew the whole project out of sheer incompetence, sheer stupidity, sheer dumb luck, sheer coincidence and so on and so forth. That was the end of day number 78. On day 79, and I hope that you would actually watch the proper video and learn these words properly at a slower pace in all the details. Here we are doing a very superficial job, very quick job, you understand? Outflank. Out. Flank. What does it mean to outflank? Outflank means to outmaneuver somebody. To outmaneuver somebody. To outsmart. To out fox. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if out fox is one word. I think it's two words. To out fox. That's wrong. Out smart, I believe, is one word. But out fox, I'm pretty certain, is two words. To out fox someone, which means you were clever than I. You were clever than I was. You won the game. You, you won the title, you won the, you won the contract, you won the contract because you outmaneuvered me, you outflanked me, you outsmarted me, you outfoxed me, outflank. Let's keep on going.
the next word we learned was to keep Keep abreast. To keep fully informed, up to the minute. If you are kept fully informed of something, you are kept abreast. Or if you make sure that you are fully informed of all the developments that are going on in a particular ta on a particular topic or a particular situation. That means you're keeping abreast. The next word we learned was, so this wasn't a word, it's an expression, to keep abreast. A prize, which means to give notice, to give notice. Inform. He was fully apprised. He was fully apprised of his rights and responsibilities when he joined the club. He should have known this thing. He should not have done that. By doing that particular thing, he violated the rules. He violated the rules, and now we have to expel him from the club. He should have known. He was fully apprised of all the rules and regulations when he joined the club. So you cannot say I did not know. He was told. He was apprised. He was given a notice. Let's move on. What does it mean to make a clean breast of something? What does it mean to make a clean breast of something? It's an expression which simply means to admit to your wrongdoing. To, to admit to your wrongdoing. To come clean. To come clean. If you did something wrong and you finally admit to it, you say, yep, I did it, it was my fault. I come forward and admit it, I just made a clean breast of it. Do you understand? It could be a male or female, it doesn't matter. It just means to admit to your own doing. Let's keep on going. What does it mean to rail as a verb? To rail someone means to scold them, to criticize. To attack them verbally, to attack somebody verbally with bitter, harsh, abusive language is to rail someone. The next word we learned was vehement. Vehement. What does it mean to do something vehemently? To do something vehemently means to do something with a great deal, with a great deal of passion, emotions, energy, vigor, vitality. If you do something with a great deal of vigor, great deal of vitality, great deal of emotions, great deal of uh, passion, we're doing it vehemently. We're doing it with vehemence. That's the noun, vehemence. The noun is vehemence. Doing it with vehemence. The next word we learned was emphatic. 
and afterwards when I watched the video I realized that I left out the M in emphatic. I misspelled it. The word is emphatic. M fat emphatic which means with emphasis with emphasis if you're doing something with emphasis if you're doing something with emphasis you're doing with it, doing it with a great deal of vigor a great deal of vitality a great deal of emotions a great deal of passion you're doing it emphatically did he what did he say when you ask him uh, if he stole the book? Well, he denied it. He denied it emphatically. He denied it emphatically, which means he denied it with all the vigor, all the vitality, all the emotion that he could muster. I denied. I denied emphatically. I denied with every fiber of my being. I denied vehemently. I denied vehemently. I denied emphatically. I deny it emphatically. I'm not sure if it's 2L or 1L, but you get the idea. It has two L's. Let's move on. That was the end of day number 79. The very last day, day number 80. Day number 80, we learn the word esoteric. As a ter esoteric, which means hard to understand, difficult to comprehend, understood by very few people, understood by only a few people. If something is being said that is understood by only a very few, few people, a theory, an idea, a notion that is understood by a very few people, such an idea is said to be esoteric. It is said to be recondite. That's a C. That's a C. Rec. Un. Again, it means understood by very few people. Abstruse. Abstruse. Cryptic. Enigmatic. Enig Enigma. An enigma. An enigma is a puzzle. Something that is difficult to understand, something that is difficult to comprehend is called an enigma. If something is an enigma, it is said to be enigmatic. It's enigmatic because I do not understand it. I cannot comprehend it. I cannot get to it, what they're trying to say. The lecture. How did you find the lecture last night? Well, I found the lecture to be. It was very esoteric, very difficult to understand his lecture. The theories were recondite, they were abstruse. I could not understand them, they were cryptic. The whole thing was quite enigmatic to me. It was an enigma, it was a puzzle. Let's move on. Let's say we're done with these words, they all basically mean the same thing. The esoteric, recondite, abstruse, cryptic and Enigmatic. One more time. Enigmatic, cryptic, abstruse, recondite, and esoteric. The next four words, the next four words that we learn, they also happen to be animals. Crow. And these are all verbs. These are all going to be verbs, not animals. Of course, we know what a crow is. Crow, crow is a bird. It's a black bird, big black bird. That's not what we're talking about. What does it mean to crow? Well, to crow 
means to brag, to show off, to brag, to boast. I know you got the first position in the exam. Stop boasting, alright? Stop showing off. Stop crowing about it. I know, you, I know you just got a new car. Stop crowing about it, okay? All day you've been talking about it. Stop boasting. Stop crowing. Stop crowing. What does it mean? To cow. The past tense would be. The past tense would be. Cow. That's the past tense. What does it mean to cow? To cow someone means to threaten. To threaten. To frighten. To scare. To scare somebody with threats of violence, threats of bodily harm. The judge gave that ruling because it is widely believed that he was carved, he was carved, he was threatened by the accused. He was threatened, he was he was scared, he was scared for his safety, he was frightened, the, the judge was frightened, he was carved. What does it mean to dog? And again, the past tense would be dog, dogging. If something dog, well, literally, it means uh, to something that follows you persistently. If something dogs you, something dogs you, it's a source of constant, it's a source of constant annoyance, constant nuisance, constant bother, constant irritation. Source of. Constant annoyance, constant bother, constant nuisance, constant irritation. You said that 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 project that paper has dogged me for two months that means it has been a source of constant nuisance constant annoyance for two months I would like to finish it because it has dogged me it has been dogging me for, for two weeks now for two months now I would like to finish the bloody thing dog what does it mean to badger the last word we learned was Badger. Badger, as you can see, has a silent D. D is not pronounced. To badger someone means to annoy someone, to irritate someone, to, to pester someone, to bother someone. Stop annoying him. Stop bothering him. You've been badgering him for two hours, leave him alone, leave your brother alone, don't annoy him, don't bother him, don't badger him, don't pester him. That was the end of day number 80 and that's the end of our quiz. Bye now.